welcome you into our studios in Los Angeles. Steve Weissman, Jan Michael Gamble, Chanda Rubin. We waited for five months. It was worth the wait, Chanda. What a week for Fiona Farrow. Yeah, I think that's what, at the end of the week, we kind of have to keep that in mind. Exciting week of tennis in difficult situation because all these players had really not been on the court and in these competitive situations for so many months, but high quality, and it was a lot of fun to watch. And what a champion we have crowned in the end. Yeah, there was a lot of, a lot of tough matches out there, Chanda. A lot of long matches early in the tournament. The players kind of getting used to being back out there. A lot of little issues with the body. We saw the trainer coming on the court quite a few times out there. And in the end, I think that we had a fantastic uh, return to WTA tennis. And it, it was some good stuff. Yeah, the WTA is back. And the final lived up to the billing. Two players looking for their second career titles. You had the fourth seed, Annette Contevate. And then the Frenchwoman, Fiona Farrow, who's been balling all week. And Jan Mike, in this first set, she had 23 winners. Yeah, pretty amazing tennis right out of the gates for Fiona Farrow. She started out with that early break and really would not relinquish it. See here just moving so well. She's really digging in on the baseline. Watch how quickly she comes forward for executing this drop shot. But a lot of the times when she digs way back there, she's quick to come forward and execute her, her big ground strokes. That's a great first set she played there. And you kind of kept waiting for Farrow to maybe dip, drop in level, and Contemate, who was not playing badly, just it was a struggle to make some inroads. But this moment here, after Contemate held serve, she battled to get the break. But then it just seemed even quicker. Farrow was able to turn the tables, get right back to what was working, getting on top of those shots, taking it a little earlier, and just dictating the pacing, the tempo, time and time again. And in the end, you look at Contivate, who had twice as many winners on her side of the court as Arrows, but Farrow just played too good today. A clean championship match, and Fiona Farrow got her first title last year. Gets her second title today and will rise to a new career high, breaking into the top 50, 44 in the world for the French woman. Look at these stats, Jan Mike. And as Chanda said, clean tennis on both sides. Yeah, absolutely. Both, both players way above with the winners versus unforced errors. That's the kind of stat you want to have in a final. Obviously, playing into some really good tennis throughout the week, everybody played a little bit better. Net Contivate, I thought, started out pretty slowly this week and played better and better each match. Today, though, Fiona Farrow certainly had to had the answers. Both above 60% of the serves. That's just a very good tennis match. High quality there. Yeah, and you think about from the ground, Farrow, who was just had that little extra, but also the second serve points won. That was a big difference, and it was tough for Contivate to take advantage of the breakpoint opportunities that she did have. Farrow was just a bit better in that department as well. So Fiona Farrow raises the trophy in Palermo. It was not an easy run. She beat two top 30 players on the way to the title, Chanda, and a lot of different types of players. Beat Sarah Ronnie, the grinder, <laughs> uh, beat Camilla Georgiou, who just absolutely crushes the ball, and then Annette Contivate in the final. You add Alexandrova to that mix. How was she able to do it? I think she was the player who had to make the most adjustments over the course of the week from each match in terms of the styles of her opponents and, and even some of the score lines. She got down in a couple of those matches, the one against Arani, um, as well as Georgie, and just recovered didn't panic, got back to what was her style. She's such an elastic player around the court. She moves beautifully, was so often on balance, even when she was stretched out. And I think that helped her as well. Just the confidence she gained with each, each of those match wins. It was fun to watch her in the finals kind of put it all together. And one of the things that we talked about during the week was the fact that she has a, a court at her house. Yeah. So that, I think that asset actually helped her quite a bit. She looked like she's ready to go when she uh, entered the event and started playing all these matches. And uh, we didn't really see any injuries from her. So she was, she was feeling pretty good out there. And I think that her game obviously lends itself really well to the clay. Uh, she moves as, just as well from the baseline and the back of the baseline as coming forward. Uh, and just the way she moves is beautifully. Such a great athlete. Got the court at her house. So, in fact, she had not won back-to-back -back matches on the WTA since the U.S. Open last year. But overall, she's won 15 in a row, those 10 <laughs> matches during the pandemic, and then five more in Palermo. So she is on a run at that new career high. Annette Contevate, back inside the top 20. Don't take anything away from her. She had a spectacular week. What can she use from Palermo going forward? 
You know, I think, you know, she can look at how well she played. She made some improvements from the start of the, the tournament, you know, through to that final as well. Big win she had against Petra Martic, who's a tricky player on the red clay. So I think she can take a lot of confidence from, from her week and how she played, how she held up physically. She had a couple little issues, but she worked her way through it. And also, you think about how she played in that final. She played a good match. She forced Farrow to play some of her best tennis. And in the end, that's all you can kind of hope for. Disappointing to not win it, but, you know, that's kind of the next best thing. Yeah, making a final is still pretty good. She had a good week, and, and for me, I, I watched all her matches. She got better every single match. Her footwork was a little bit sloppy at the beginning. Was, she saw her reaching for a lot of balls on the ground strokes and missing some of those shots uh, and started to get better and better as she felt more and more confident. You know, obviously, no one matched tough coming into this event, and it's the first event for quite a while, so everybody going to get used to being back on the court. All the players wanted the matches. It's exactly what she got. All right, first final, first winner in five months on the WTA. It's Fiona Farrow over Annette Contivate. Meantime, one of the big stories all week long was Elisabetta Cocciaretto, the 19-year-old Italian. She actually got to the finals in doubles. And in this one, teaming up with Martina Trevesian, taking on Aronska Roos and Tamara Zidancic. And Chanda, Roos and Zidanskis generated 16 breakpoint opportunities. Yeah, you talk about, you know, the players in the singles final. This is just as big as well, especially for, you know, those like Cacioretto, who had such a good week in singles, but just came up a little bit short here. But certainly it was a lot of fun watching these teams pull together and, you know, play their best tennis in the big moments. Very competitive match. 7-5, seven, 7-5 five, seven, five was the final, Jan Mike, as Roos and Zidancic get that title. Uh, what was your, your biggest takeaway from, from the first week of Pro Tour Tennis coming back? Well, first of all, let's bet that Corchi Reto is, is a huge takeaway for me. I, I'm a big fan of hers. Right out of the, she stands way inside the baseline in those second serve returns. What a nice uh, young player she is. Really fun to watch her. Um, but I felt like the quality of the tennis was just a lot higher than I thought it might be. We had a lot of great matches, long matches, hard-fought matches. Everybody was out there to, to win this tournament, to win the matches and get, get tough back on the clay. And I think we saw a lot of that. And we see here um, the doubles. I agree, Chanda, it's so important to get the extra matches, try to get back on the court, stay on court as much as possible. Yeah, and I think for me, at the end of the week, you know, we talk so much about the health and, and the uncertainties, um, you know, with the pandemic. And players really stepped up. You know, they, they worked their way through tough situations on court, which that's normally the only thing you have to worry about. But in this case, they had all these other sort of off-court considerations. And I think everybody pulled together, took care of, of what they needed to. And at the end, you know, we had what was essentially a healthy week mm. of tennis. And that's what we were looking for. And Italy was hit so hard at the start of the pandemic to be able to have the return in that country and have it go off really without a hitch. Uh, a fantastic week of tennis on the WTA. Much more to come here on Tennis Channel Live. We will have our final celebrity lookalike. See if Jim Mike can go three for three on that. Plus, the tour continues in Lexington, Kentucky. That means 16-year-old Coco Golf making her return for the first time since Australia. We will hear from the American teenage sensation next.